CES 2022, it's happening. I like finding the things that are super weird and unique and cool. Welcome to CES 2022. We made it, we did it, we are here. CES didn't happen last year. It was scrapped due to the pandemic, but it is back. Instead of having 200,000 attendees, we only have 60,000 attendees. Instead of a ton of vendors that are here, there's a lot of them that have backed out. So I am incredibly curious to see who actually showed up to this thing, who has technology. I'm going to spend the next two days scouring the convention center floor to see if I can find the top five things at CES 2022 some of the greatest tech and hopefully some of the weirdest products that I can find. The boring tunnel should go from the West Hall to the South Hall, I think. I don't know. One thing you need to know if you ever come to the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas is that you are going to do a ton of walking. So I pulled up to the very front, but I have to get my badge and it's way over here around the building. Here's a first for CES. This is where you come to get your badge, but before you can even get your badge, you have to do your vaccine review at this station. So I have it downloaded on my wallet, on my phone, so I'll just show them that and hopefully that works. Good news, I passed the vaccine test. <laughs> That's good. If you don't do that, you can't get in. They looked at my wallet. They didn't scan my wallet thing, which I thought was interesting. They were EMTs, so they're people that drive in hospitals and help people. So we got the badge, it's kind of heavy. Guess what, if I lose this thing, it's a piece of paper. If I lose it, I can't take my mask off. If I lose it, they're gonna charge me $300. $300 for losing this thing. We are out, I have my badge, and the Tesla Loop boring tunnel is right across the street, so we're gonna go for it. Side note, metaverse, NFTs, crypto is going to be a big thing here at CES this year. I'm kind of shaking right now because I just sold my first big NFT. I bought it for like $35,000 two months ago and I just sold it for $200,000. And I don't know what to think about it. It's a JPEG of an ape. It's a Gary Vaynerchuk V-Friend ape, so it's kind of tripping here. But it's a good start to CES. Technology, Web3 is happening. I think this is gonna be my ride. I shouldn't be as excited as I am. Hello. Hey, how are you? Mind if I film in here while I go? Fine. My first official ride in the boring tunnel. Oh, look at the walls. They are so cool. Wow, it looks like the boring bricks, kind of. They're all gray. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's the tunnel. There we go. If we're only going 40 and it feels like we're going 60 right now because you're in this warp speed tunnel. I feel like we're going to space right now. Behind is the rear view camera so you can see the car behind us. And then ahead, of course, is the view. This is pretty cool. I think we're near the end. Is this the end of it or is this just one of the stops? This is the Central Station. Central Station. But look at that place. It looks so rad in there. All the cars, all the people. And we're going to keep going. So. That you're not using autopilot. Is the sensors not ready for it in here yet? Right, so we're not using autopilot right now. We uh, have uh, all gone through some extensive training to ensure that we are compliant within the loop. Okay, we're coming out. There is the big grinding thing that dug the holes. The boring tunnel. The boring tool for the boring tunnel. We're going back in. And now we're You're going gonna let me in. keep going? Yeah, we can go here yeah, back to back the to central. central. Dude, this is the best driver, best boring tunnel driver. What's your name? I'm Sal. Sal, Sal is the best. If you're gonna ride in the boring tunnel, maybe ride a Sal. The number one thing on my list of top five things from CES 2020 is something that's never been here before. Tesla, they are here. I mean, they're not officially here like exhibiting, but in the past, Tesla has never really come to CES and showed off their tech. And now, inadvertently, they're showing off the best of the tech that they have. If you've ever been to CES, you know that there are people everywhere and it's crazy busy. Not as busy this year, and a big part of it is because of the boring company tunnel. All of the cars are totally quiet. This looks like it's a spaceport out of the future. Elon is just like doing crazy things, going to Mars, building tunnels to solve the traffic crisis. So yeah, no surprise that uh, riding in a Tesla is my number one best tech of 2022. I already feel like I've come and experienced something great, but now we are actually going to go inside of CES and find some of the weirdest and coolest tech. Let's go. It is so quiet. There's barely anybody here. And a lot of the spaces are just empty. Like right there, usually a booth. Right here, giant, usually a big booth. These guys showed up. The postal service is here. Now it's not completely empty. If you look around, this looks like it's like the computer VR place. 
but it's usually much busier right here. Typically, the best booth at CES every year, my favorite, is the LG booth. It is massive, giant TVs that go down an entire tunnel with all of the devices. Well, with CES, with everything that's going on in the world with Omicron and COVID, they um, are not here, but they did something really unique because they have one of the biggest spaces. I don't know how to explain it to you other than just show you. So they have all of these chairs, if you want to call them chairs, they're just like these square blocks everywhere with QR codes. If you scan it and click on it, all right, so it's basically, and now you have some videos and some virtual things that shows all their products. So the theme of this CES so far is it's very, very empty here. My number two coolest thing that I have seen at CES 2020 is here inside of the Sony booth. This right here is a satellite. It's not like a small version of some big satellite that's in space. This is the actual size of a satellite that is going to space in 2022. Why do I think this is cool? There's lots of satellites. This is one that you can actually get into and use this camera right there. It's a 28 by 135 camera, so you're not gonna be like zooming down on somebody's house, but you can rent for 10 minute intervals this satellite and have 360 degree movement to be able to see down on Earth and look at things. A drone in space that you can rent for 10 minutes. Good job, Sony, that is cool. Every booth is like the super fancy Sony or LG booths. You also have just like smaller booths and those are some of the ones that I like to see the most. Yes, for the products that they have, but also just for the weird signage. This one's talking about supply chain in Mexico. A new supply chain, a new beginning. Beginning, what? <laughs> it's a forest inside of CES. Every year at CES, the FBI Las Vegas is here. They were here last year and I felt kind of weird filming them because I'm like, it's the FBI. But now they're wearing masks, I can show them, but yeah. Homeland Security, FBI, has a booth at CES every year. I'm not quite sure, why? Check out the line at Starbucks. All the way down, all the way around. I'm not quite sure what I'm looking at, but it says meet your virtual twin. And then there's a blue circle on the ground. So let's watch this guy stand in the circle. What does his virtual twin look like? I don't know. Right here, right here. What? What? That's him? He just looks like a color blob. Maybe if I go to the other side, I can see it better. Lots of... What he's doing here. He's twisting his brain right now. He's driving, driving his brain of his virtual twin. This is the technology we came to CES for. Look at this guy. He's walking around. The monitor on his back, you can see a bunch of people. And then it has like a radar sensor. And he's wearing a backpack, wandering around. Is that heavy? Ah, uh, so humble. <laughs> affordable. <laughs> affordable. I asked him how heavy it is, he said affordable. So that sounds pretty heavy. We have found the metaverse. It is at CES. It's right here. And unfortunately, it's closed for business, apparently. I thought the metaverse would be a lot cooler than that. Look, the FAA is here too. It's not just the FBI. And they're talking about hacking things inside of planes. FAA, FBI, a lot of US government people here. Maybe they're looking for the newest, latest, and greatest engineers that can come to their booth, but I don't remember seeing the FAA here before. Well, we saw the virtual twin of yourself. Now we can see a thing called 
20. This looks like a little robot that is driving around to make your life easier and bring you things. It's like a robot butler that goes around the house. The kind of thing that you see in movies. The name's pretty good, 20. It looks like this one's just like carrying a box right now of like things around the house. But it even has a face. There's 20's face. Oh, it's moving away from me. Back it up, yeah, back it up. It uses LiDAR on top, which is the sensor that most companies use for their autonomous driving. I like finding the things that are super weird and unique and cool. That's one of them. And now for the third coolest thing that I've seen at CES in 2020. Two. It is by BMW, and it's a car, but it's not for the reasons that you would think. This car is amazing because it literally changes colors. It's like the chameleon of cars. I don't quite know how it works yet, but I can see it moving over there. So let's go take a closer look and learn more about this thing and see the color changing in action. I kind of need that. It really is changing colors. What is happening here? It's the world's first color changing car. The material is e-ink and the question was, how does it work? It's real color change. So actually within this kind of, like a thick cardboardy kind of material, papery material, if you hold it in your hands, um, there are many um, transparent capsules with color pigments in them, black and white color pigments. And by controlling electrodes on the top and bottom of this um, a layer, the wish color comes to the surface. So when you see black on the car, it's really black pigments coming to the surface. Or when you see white, it's white pigments coming to the surface. So that's how it works. Um, why we love it so much is because it's very sustainable. It's very low energy. It's not a display. It's no light. It's real color change. A little bit of energy to change a color and absolutely no energy to hold it there. And of course it's attractive and it gives you flexibility, but we see a lot of useful uh, use cases in this. And of course self-expression, but also you know, we can show you information on the exterior of the car. We can show you battery status. We can show you if a car sharing car is free. We can just look at the car and you know what the status is. It looks really cool seeing the actual rims like change colors. And it can be efficient for you. Like say it's a super hot day. You can change it from black to white because white doesn't absorb the sun as much. You can tell the way that it's wrapped on there. It's kind of like an Amazon Kindle. That's essentially a good way to think about it. It takes a low amount of power. So it's not like you need giant batteries to charge this thing. But if you look on the doors, you can kind of see like they actually have like a little bit of, it almost looks like tape on the corner. So yes, this is the world's first, but I think they might need to clean that up a little bit. That's some of the stuff with this super unique world's first color changing car. That is my third coolest thing that I've seen at CE. Yes. It's only four o'clock in the afternoon right now. There's the taxi stand, not one person in line. And then you look over this way and it's really empty. Typically it is so much busier right here. So not only are the number of companies not here, but a lot of people that are coming just to look at stuff at CES that just aren't here. But at the same time, there's still a lot of really cool tech that's here. Now we need to go find the fourth and fifth coolest thing at CES. Right now I still don't know what that is, but I bet it's gonna be amazing. Let's go. to have a Japanese style home. You know, really small, sustainable, pretty looking. Well, this booth looks like they sell that. One of the places I always love to come is the Korea section. That's right, the government of Korea sends a bunch of really creative engineers to CES every year and they highlight some of the best tech to try to get some investments from other people so that they can develop this tech. Last time we were here, we met the mayor of Seoul, Korea. Sadly, he passed away about a year ago, but lots of really, really cool tech. And that's part of the beauty of CES, the opportunity to see some of these engineers that are coming up with the future products that will hopefully change the world. The last time we had CES, there was no pandemic. There was no people working from home and staying home 
out for multiple weeks at a time. So of course you're going to see different levels of working out things at home. And that brings me to number four on the list of my top five favorite tech things at CES 2022. It's a workout thing and it's something that I would love to have inside of my house. Check out Climber. So this is it, this is Climber, and it's one of my favorite workout things. They launched in August 2020, so this is their first year at CES, but it's something that you can do at home a lot quicker than riding the Peloton or the Echelon because you're doing a full body workout. I'm gonna give it a try and see what it feels like. I used to own a stair climber inside of my house. That's right, like I love stair climbing. I have this weird thing where I wanna climb the tallest building in all 50 states. I've done like 25 of them. I'm a little scared to be honest, it's intimidating. There we go, there's a trainer. On the <laughs> okay. I've only been on here a couple minutes and I'm burning. And sometimes the trainer will tell you to do this really fast. My thighs are on fire right now. I think the minimum classes are 10 minutes in duration. So you come get on this for 10 minutes to start your day. I think you're gonna feel pretty good. This is my fourth favorite tech at CES. I'm really tired. Let's go find the fifth. There's the climber in the background. My thighs are burning in such a good way. Such a good way. I love this. Okay, I might need to buy one of those. And for my fifth favorite thing at CES, I told you I was going to have some cool technology, but also some weird things. This one kind of balances both sides of that line. Don't you hate it when your cat poops in the litter box and nobody cleans it up and you've got 30 things of poop sitting there? That's frustrating. Or do you ever wonder, how much does my cat run around for the day? Or how much does it drink? Or how many calories does it burn? These guys at Per Song, Per Song have seemed to figure it all out. So with this litter box, every time that your cat goes to the bathroom or takes a poop, as they call it, has a bowel movement, it shows each one of them. Average poop count for this cat right here is 2.5 times a day. But today on January 6th, the cat has not pooped at all. It's one o'clock in the afternoon. Feeling okay, little buddy? So this is called Lobby Bot. They just came out with it. It's going to be launching in the next couple of months. You set this inside of your house. The cat can enter and exit right here. You put this thing inside of your house. The cat jumps up and goes inside of it. This wall is typically all closed. When the cat jumps in there to go poop, it weighs it to see how heavy it is. And then after it poops, it scoops the poop into this bin and leaves all the droppings right there. It auto refills with fresh litter from the top. It's also connected to Wi-Fi. You can search for it on your app. If you're away from home, you'll see, you'll be like, oh, my little cat just went poop, and now it weighs this much. If the cat is having too much diarrhea, or how sick the cat is getting, if it's not pooping enough, and it gives you alerts and tells you things that you should do to take care of your cat. Maybe there's something wrong. It could be a leading indicator on if you have a sick cat. And the second product they have is an activity tracker. It's like a Fitbit for your cat. It's extremely light. You can put this around your cat's neck, and and then it tracks all of its activity. But last but not least, this is a water bowl for your cat. It'll come up and drink from it, and it also informs you how much water is my cat drinking, and it also duels as a beautiful water fountain. So between those three products, this is it. Pure Song is my fifth favorite thing at CES, and I especially like them because they have a sign that says, Poopy. Well, that about does it for me here from CES 2022. Let me know what your thoughts are. Did I choose some good tech? Did you like my top five that I chose? It was a fun time, some crazy things, some pretty cool tech. Hopefully the world is different next year and we can celebrate a lot more tech from a lot more companies from people all over the world. What things were here at CES that maybe I just full on missed? All right, thanks for watching, see ya. Also, if you are unaware how to properly shake people's hands, CES has you covered. I prefer this one. It scoops the poop. It scoops the poop. It scoops the poop.